Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I'm really excited to get into it. Today's video is a subscriber request. I had one of my subscribers request if I could do a review on the new Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be doing a first impressions, a wear test, and I do have a couple shades here, so I'm also gonna do some swatches of those as well. I'm excited to get into it. So if you're interested to see all that, be sure to go ahead and stick around till the end of the video. But before we get into it, I just wanna say thank you to all my new and returning subscribers out there. Thank y'all for sticking around, supporting my content, and helping me to grow my channel. It really means a lot to me. So with that being said, if you haven't already, just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell button as well so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into it. So like I said, today we're gonna be doing a review on this Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. I have four shades here and I'm gonna go ahead and get into the swatches in a little bit, but I'm currently wearing it on my face now and I'm wearing the shade Tan Medium Deep with some bronzer on top. So I just wanna read what the website says just to give you all a rundown of the product. So they say this tinted hydrator with hyaluronic acid and vegan squalane is a one-way ticket to quench perfection. Our new bare focus tinted hydrator features buildable sheer to medium coverage with a semi-matte finish for a naturally flawless and nourished glow. So like it says, it includes hyaluronic acid and vegan squalane, which helps to moisturize the skin. It provides a buildable sheer to medium coverage. It has a semi-matte finish and they claim it perfects with a silky smooth, non-greasy application. When I get to the application, I'll test all those claims and see how well the product holds up to them but so far that's what they're promising that's what we can expect from this foundation this product is cruelty free vegan fragrance free and paraben free now with this product you get 0.91 fluid ounces of product as far as the price currently looking on the website they're selling it on the wet and wild website for $5.99 but I'm seeing on Walmart and Target it's going for $4.99 either way it's relatively inexpensive but I don't know what the actual retail price is because every website's giving me a different number but it's under six dollars now as far as the shades go I do just want to say out the bat I am pretty disappointed in the shade range for this product now it only comes in 12 shades it is supposed to be a sheer to medium product so in theory it can be worked into a bunch of different skin tones but you'll see when I get into the swatches I feel like a lot of these just have the same undertone it's not really very accommodating of the variety of undertones out there that exist and as well I just feel like they skipped a lot of shades within the range that they have and they could have done a little bit more as far as going darker with the shades it does come in 12 shades in theory looking on the wet and wild website there does appear to be 12 different shades but if you hop over to the Ulta website they only have seven of the shades available for sale and on the wet and wild websites the shades that aren't available on Ulta are also out of stock so I'm not sure if they even offer these shades to begin with and they just happen to sell out or if they're expanding the shade range but in any case I don't know why they didn't prepare for more people to buy the shades if they happen to sell out and if they're expanding the shade range I feel like they could have done a better job I don't understand why they didn't just start with these shades to begin with because the shade range already needs some work and I just feel like it's especially disappointing from a brand like Wet n Wild because looking at their other complexion products, they have their Dewy Photo Focus Foundation is available in 18 shades, their Matte Photo Focus is available in 20 shades, and their Photo Focus Stick Foundation is available in 20 shades. So it's not a company that hasn't already developed shades with other products. So why they didn't just go ahead and start off with a better shade range from the jump, I don't know. But I just wanted to point that out. So now I'm just going to go ahead and get into the swatches because like I said, I have quite a few shades here. I have four of the shades here from lightest to darkest I have porcelain light medium medium tan and tan medium deep so I'm gonna go ahead and just swatch these on the back of my arms real quick so I went ahead and did a heavy swatch here on the back of my hand so y'all could see everything so here's what the shades look like so from right to left here we have the shades porcelain light medium medium tan and then tan medium deep so i don't know if y'all can tell from the swatches but there really isn't like a super huge difference here there's barely a leap from porcelain to light medium light medium and medium tan honestly look like the same shade to me and then there is a distinct jump from medium tan to tan medium deep but in saying that i just feel like there could definitely be a color in between here i feel like this is just like a pretty big jump because this shade definitely was too light this was the shade that i originally ordered and i was hoping it was going to be a good match for my skin but it ended up being a little bit too light and washing me out but then the shade tan medium deep is just a little bit too dark and it really threw off the rest of the look it made my bronzer look darker than I was intending to not that I think it was a bad bronze I just think it's a little darker than what I was going for and I want to point out that the shade here porcelain is the lightest shade that they offer and then the shade medium tan deep out of the shades that they currently have available is the second darkest they do have one shade darker than this that I've seen available at Target Walmart Ulta and they do have a couple darker shades than that on the wet and wild website but like I said 
the ones that don't seem to be available at physical retailers also don't seem to be available on the wet and wild website even though they do exist i know it's a little difficult now to go in stores and do swatches of products but if it is at all possible i would definitely recommend just getting a swatch done so you can go ahead and judge what would be the best shade for you because the shade range is pretty lacking it does leave quite a bit to be desired okay so that was my little spark note summary of the product just giving you all a little rundown of everything ready to go ahead and just get into the application and show you all how this looks on the skin i'll be back to do a quick application and then when that's all done i'll do a little quick first impressions and then we'll finish off the video doing a little bit of a wear test and a final check-in later this evening so enough rambling let's go ahead and get into the actual application and demo of the product all right y'all so i'm done rambling about the product i'm ready to go ahead and get into the actual application but before we do that y'all know the drill we got to go over skin prep because skin prep is really important and really plays into how your makeup's going to last throughout the day and how it's going to sit on top of the skin so i just want to go ahead and run through the products that i used off camera before i go ahead and get into the application so i went ahead and washed my face in the shower and then right after the shower i went ahead and started off with this first aid beauty ultra repair wild oat hydrating toner this contains a bunch of good ingredients to help hydrate and soothe the skin so i like to just go ahead and start off my skincare routine with this to go ahead and start infusing my skin with moisture and to help calm down any irritation or redness i might have going on and then once i go ahead and apply the toner i just apply a little bit of this naturium niacinamide five percent gel cream so this contains five percent niacinamide which is really good at performing a bunch of different skin functions it helps with brightening it helps with regulating sebum production it helps with anti-aging a whole bunch of different benefits this formula also contains a high amount of dimethicone which helps to create an occlusive layer over the skin to help seal in the moisture and prevent it from escaping but this also has an added benefit of creating like a smooth surface on the skin which really helps to create a nice smooth base for the makeup to apply to something that's a bit more of a recent buy that i've been incorporating into my skincare routine is this kinship oat ceramide relief oil so i don't like to apply this as a separate step in my skincare routine what i like to do is i just like to take like two or three drops and mix it in with my moisturizer to give it a little bit of a boost and this contains oat ceramides fatty acid rich oils and a form of vitamin c and what these all help to do is to help soothe calm rebuild and brighten skin so like i said i don't apply this directly to the skin like an oil i just mix in two or three drops with my moisturizer to give it a little bit of a boost of course we got to finish off with an spf i've just been using this biore uv watery essence spf 50 pa 4 plus this has a really nice finish it's not greasy like american sunscreens it has a nice natural skin like finish and it has really good uv protection so that's my skin prep that's what i have going on under the foundation so now i'm ready to go ahead and get into the application so i'm gonna apply this like i do a normal foundation i'm gonna go ahead and see how it applies with a brush if i do need to go in with a sponge afterwards i will go ahead and buff it out with a sponge but if i'm satisfied with how it looks with just a brush i'm just gonna stick with applying it with a brush and of course i'm gonna go ahead and apply a first layer let that set and then apply a second layer to see if it's buildable at all so with that being said i'm ready to go ahead and start applying the product so i'm gonna go ahead and apply the shade tan medium deep that's the one out of all the shades that i have that seems the most promising the most in line with my skin tone and i'm gonna go ahead and take it on this real techniques expert face brush i got some product on the brush head and now i'm just gonna go ahead and start buffing it out So this tinted hydrator actually blends out really well. It's not too thick, it's not too watery, it's somewhere in between texture wise. And I feel like that's allowing it to really blend out smoothly and easily. It just seems to glide with the brush. Looking here in the mirror, I'm not seeing any brush strokes, which is really nice. We love a foundation that doesn't apply streaky. Okay, so I applied the product and I let it set for about a minute and this is what we're looking like so far. So this is what one layer looks like on the skin. My overall skin tone has been evened out, but as far as the little spots, you know, over here I have going on on this cheek, the hyperpigmentation I have going on here on this cheek, and then this little hyperpigmentation spot I have here on my forehead, that's all still peeking through. Not as bad as it was before, but this formula didn't really do too much in terms of covering those up with one layer. Now, I didn't expect it to. It does say that it is sheer to medium buildable, but so far I'm not mad at it. It does a pretty good job of evening everything out and giving me a more natural healthy skin look you know once i've allowed it to set it doesn't feel tacky at all it does say it has a semi matte finish but it does also include those ingredients like squalane hyaluronic acid and glycerin which do help to moisturize the skin and it's supposed to give it that sort of natural glowy look as well it's not completely matte i do see some radiance but it's not shiny or oily or anything like that it just looks like a nice healthy moisturized skin glow so if you're someone that doesn't really have super problematic skin and you just want something to kind of even everything out one layer will probably do a good job but I want to see if I can get a little bit more coverage out of this so I'm gonna go ahead and apply another layer and let that set and then we'll come back and see what we're looking like okay so I have some product here on the brush and I'm ready to go ahead and apply the second layer
Okay, so I went ahead and applied the foundation and buffed it out with the Real Techniques brush. And this is what two layers is looking like. I don't think it looks terrible, but I do think I have just like a tiny bit too much foundation on my face. So I am going to go ahead and take a beauty blender and just bounce that over the skin to suck up any excess product and help smooth it out just a little bit. So this is what two layers is looking like. I went ahead and just buffed it out with the Real Techniques brush and then bounced over it real quick with a beauty sponge to soak up the excess product. And with two layers, honestly, I really love how this looks. It's gone ahead and set now. It doesn't feel tacky still, even with two layers, which is really nice. It does have that nice semi-matte finish. It's not completely matte. It doesn't feel tight or drying. Looking at the skin now, it doesn't emphasize any lines or texture. My pores are covered really well. It hasn't collected at all in the under eye areas. It hasn't bunched up here at all in the smile lines or here in the forehead. And I don't really see any obvious texture blended in really well. It doesn't look cakey at all or anything like that. Coverage wise, it did a good job of covering stuff up. Two layers did do a really good job of covering up the discoloration and stuff I have going on still. It's not 100% no, but it's like 90%. You know, it's like my skin, but better. And that's fine for like an everyday wear product. I don't want something that's super perfect. I do still want my skin to look like skin. So this does do a good job of putting your best skin forward while not completely covering everything up and making it look unnatural. So I'm satisfied with how it looks with two layers. I really love the coverage this gives me, how it sits on the skin. And so far there's nothing to dislike about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup real quick to see how it plays with other products. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bronze up my face and do my brows like my normal routine and then I'll finish the first impressions so I'm gonna just take this Fenty Beauty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade Island Tang and I'm taking this elf airbrush stipple brush to go ahead and just bronze the face up All right, y'all, so I went ahead and finished my makeup off camera and here's what we're looking like now. So this is the foundation with bronzer on top and then I went ahead and just did my brows as well. It didn't lift the foundation anywhere where I applied it. I don't see any of my hyperpigmentation that the tinted hydrator covered up peeking through again. And as well, the bronzer blended really nice on top. I don't see any streaks or skipping and it just looks like one natural skin-like layer sitting on top. It doesn't look like makeup. It doesn't look cakey, none of that. So not only does it look good bare-faced on its own, but it also plays well with other makeup products as well at least the ones that I tried out like I said there's no lifting no streaks none of that so I'm really satisfied with how everything's looking so far I really like the effect that this gives my skin and I think that this is a really good foundation so far but obviously you know we're gonna do a little bit of a wear test and we're gonna see how this wears throughout the day and see if my opinions still hold after a couple hours so I just want to go ahead and do a quick time check it's currently 12 30 p.m. so I'll be back in a couple hours to do a final check-in and see how everything held up and see whether or not I still approve of the product after a few hours of wear Hey y'all, so I'm back to do the final check-in. I don't know if any of y'all can relate to this struggle, but as a contact wearer, I am honestly just ready to go ahead and take my contacts out, wash my face off, go ahead and get comfortable. But before I do that, I gotta go ahead and give y'all my final check-in. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and give my final thoughts on the foundation and see whether or not I still recommend it. Before I start talking about how the foundation wore, I do just wanna do a quick time check. So when we did our first check-in, it was about 12.30. Now it's currently 6.30. So it's been about six hours since we've done the initial application and this is what we're looking like six hours later so this is how the foundation looks um, yes, the first thing that I do notice, of course, is the oils peeking through. When we first applied it, it had a nice, natural, soft matte finish. Had a little bit of a radiance to it, but nothing too crazy. Now it's definitely in oily territory. But I'm not going to lie to y'all, it's really not as bad as I've seen with some of the complexion products I've tried in the past. And remember, besides my skin prepped, I didn't apply anything else to help control the shine or anything like that. I did apply the powder bronzer, the Fenty Sunstalker, but I find that that's more of like a radiant finish too. Like, that's not really a mattifying powder. It doesn't really do too much in terms of mattifying and taking away shine so like I said this is what we look like with no extra help as far as powdering using a mattifying primer anything like that so for six hours of wear with no extra product to help with the shine this really isn't too bad compared to some of the products that I've tried in the past and looking at the actual foundation on my face right now so as my oils have peeked through it has kind of emphasized my pores just a little bit but again it's really not as bad as I've had with some complexion products in the past my skin does still have a very smooth quality to it as far as how the product actually is laying on the face it's not breaking up or anything at all it's not separating anywhere I don't see any creasing I'm good in my smile lines nothing going on in the under eye area and I do sometimes get a little bit of a wrinkle here in between my eyebrows and I don't really have that going on again the forehead everything is good the foundation has gotten a little bit oily as my skin has gotten more oily throughout the day but otherwise it hasn't really broken up it's pretty much stayed intact and it hasn't slid off at all this product does a really good job as far as performance it wears pretty well it hasn't broken up on me after six 
hours of wear. It has gotten a little oily, but I feel like that's nothing a setting powder or mattifying primer couldn't fix. It hasn't settled into my fine lines or creases. And I really love that this product has some skincare benefits as well. It feels really nice on the skin. It's nice and lightweight. And I also love that it's buildable. If you just want something to give you a little bit more of an even tone and to calm down some redness, you can go ahead and just apply a sheer layer of it. If you do have a little bit more problematic skin and you need more coverage in that regard, you also do have the option to layer the product and build up the coverage a little bit. I don't really have any qualms about the performance. This product does have potential, but where this does fall short is the shade range. I said it at the beginning of the video and I'll say it again. This shade range leaves much to be desired and wet and wild, baby girl, I don't know what's going on. Y'all need to come up with at least another darker shade. You need to come out with some more medium tone shades and you need to stop making these light tone shades that are so minusculely different from each other. They might as well be the same shade. It's crazy. Like I said, this product has potential, but I really don't feel like a lot of people will be able to actually use the product unless they expand the shade range. So if you are interested in this product, if you do have the ability to get a sample, a swatch or whatever to see if there is a shade that matches your skin tone, I would definitely say go ahead and do that first before you actually commit to purchasing the product. So that is my final review on this product. If you can find a shade that matches you, I definitely would recommend giving it a try if you have your eyes on it. But that's it for my review today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments if you're interested in this product or not. Let me know what you liked about this video, what you disliked, and let me know if you have any requests for any future video ideas. Let me know if you want to see a review on a specific product so I can keep those ideas in mind when I'm sitting down thinking of things to film. Like I said, if you haven't already, just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, I should be back shortly with new content. Bye.